The bow anchors are the high holding power, stockless anchors, normally seen on board these vessels. The navigational equipment required at time of anchoring, the most influential factors are likely to be current. The head of the anchor is designed to pivot about 30 degrees and 45 degrees on either side of the shank. This assists the anchor to bite into the seabed when the anchor touches the seabed. It is also robust enough to take the heavy loads imposed on it while the vessel is riding to its anchor and also to the dynamic loads imposed on it by the external forces and by the vessel during anchoring and when swinging at anchorage. It is necessary to clean the anchor when heaved up and also prior re-anchoring if necessary. The nature of the seabed varies largely from place to place. Clay is a very good holding ground and the holding power is up to four times the weight of the anchor. A five degree angle between the seabed and the cable, where it connects to the anchor, results in a loss about 25% and the traffic congestion at the anchorage. Windlasses have been known to shear off or the mechanisms destroyed due to the vessel being pushed too fast by the current. A suitable anchoring position must be finalized. It should be away from navigational hazards. Decide on an officer to supervise the operation. On bridge, the officer must plot the anchor position and draw a swing circle and the possible drags. The main advantage of letting go of the anchor is that the brake will render before any critical stresses are reached. Larger the area exposed, greater is the effect for constant force. Cable can pile up, leading to poor holding power of the, the vessel must lower the anchor in the water when at or nearly at the anchoring position. Another factor that has greater effect on the vessel during or after anchoring is underkill clearance. Anchors have been lost from vessels due to any one or more of the following reasons. Loss of anchor due to brake failure. Anchors were let go in deep waters and the brakes were not capable of holding the cable from slipping. The windlass itself has broken away from its foundation. Anchors have been abandoned due to being dropped in wrong positions whereby they are fouled in pipelines, cables and other underwater obstructions. Parts of the anchor, such as shanks, flukes, etc., have been fractured. Anchor shackles, especially joining shackles, have failed, resulting in loss of anchor. Anchors lost at sea due to improper securing of the cable whereby the anchor has slipped off. Loss of anchor due to dropping the anchor while the vessel had excessive speed. Lastly, Anchors were lost during maintenance of the windless brakes when the brake liners were being changed. <laughs>